All right, fun. let's get this started. Just give us the truth and everything will work out. Excuse me, why are you here? <laughs> why are we here? Does copyright infringement mean anything to you? Copy what? Copyright infringement. We've seen your YouTube. We know what you did. <laughs> My YouTube? I, I don't have a YouTube. So this isn't your video with Nickelback music? Maybe. Yes. So what if it has Nickelback music? What's the big deal? No, moron. Even if your music tastes are questionable, I mean really Nickelback, your ability to use said music in the video is the issue. It's illegal. That's why we're here. Illegal? You guys have got to be kidding me. Can I have a lawyer or something? This is ridiculous. No lawyer can save you now. And if you don't have anything to say for yourself, then you're going to be locked away for a long time. Bye bye For real? <laughs> Tell my mom I love her. This is Savannah, and she's going away for life. Well, actually, probably just going to copyright jail. Okay, fine. Her YouTube video is going to get taken down because she used copyrighted music in the background. Everybody knows you can't use copyrighted material in your YouTube videos. Or can you? What Savannah doesn't know is that her work is protected under fair use. We see the borrowing of copyrighted work all the time for all kinds of things like YouTube videos, social media posts, or academic works. All of these things can be protected under fair use. But what is fair use? We asked the students at SAM what they thought. Hmm. It's weird to think about. Prop. Oh, I, I don't know how to explain that. I scroll through like TikTok a lot and um, usually they have like somebody is spreading like uh, something that's like false or like somebody's done it already and they're not giving them like credit. So then it, the video like will get removed and they get like canceled. I feel like it makes sense to do that as long as you give the real author, the real creator credit for it. Well, something that comes to my mind is like when a TikTok song gets really popular or something like that, is there is there really any way for the artist to come at the millions of people reposting with their sound? Or is it like, because this is a clip and it's not exploiting your song in any way, then you can use it as fair use. That's kind of what I think about that. Fair use is using snippets of copyrighted material, but it's not like the whole thing, so you're not taking credit for it. You're just using parts of it. Fair use is the use of another person's copyrighted work. You don't have to pay for it or even ask for permission because it's a fair use of that person's work. According to the Copyright Act of 1976, there are four factors to pay attention to when considering whether or not a work is fair use. The purpose and character of the use, the nature of the copyrighted work, how much of the copyrighted work was used, and the effect on the original work's market. That tends to cover a lot of ground on things like using a few seconds of copyrighted music or using a copyrighted photo for educational purposes in a video. Kind of like what I'm doing right now. So let's see what happens when I give Savannah the Copyright Act of 1976, Section 107. What is this? The Copyright Act of 1976, Section 107. Notwithstanding the provisions of Sections 106 and 106A, the fair use of a copyrighted work, including such use by reproduction in copies or phono records, or by any other means specified by that section, for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, including multiple copies for classroom use, scholarship or research is not an infringement of copyright. Hey, I think that means that I am not copy infringing whatever you said I was doing because I was using my work for school. Okay, so what? It's the nature of the work that matters. It needs to be transformative enough, as we saw in the ruling with uh, Warhol v. Goldsmith. Goldsmith took a photo of Prince, and then Andy Warhol later took that photo and made edits to it and used it in commercial works. Then the U.S. Court of Appeals of the Second Circuit said that the secondary work itself must reasonably be perceived as embodying a distinct artistic purpose, one that conveys a new meaning or message separate from its source material. Basically, it wasn't transformative enough, so they sided with Goldsmith and said that it was not fair use. Here are some examples of some cases that dealt with fair use and copyright. Sony Corporation of America v. Universal City Studios Incorporation, which addresses whether or not home-recorded devices, such as tape recorders, are fair use. 
So when he won that one, the course decided that it was fair use. Fisher V. D. tackles the nature of reusing the likeness of another piece of entertainment to create a parody or a satirical sample. In this case, it was a song. The courts ruled that it was fair use and Rick D's won. Other cases that include parody of copyrighted material include Campbell v. Okafor's music, and the Supreme Court decided that it was fair use, and Campbell won. Another one is Leibovitz v. Paramount Pictures Corporation. Paramount used a satirically edited photo of one of Leibovitz's pictures. It was considered fair use, and Paramount won. In Warner Bros. v. ABC, ABC made a character that closely resembled Superman, and while ABC won, it was noted that this defense may not work for every similar case. Things get really weird with YouTube's copyright and fair use statement where they say creators should only upload videos that they have made or that they are authorized to use. That means that they should not upload videos that they didn't make or use content in their videos that someone else owns a copyright to, such as music tracks, snippets of copyrighted programs, or videos made by other users without necessary authorization. But counter to that, the Hosen Zada v. Klein case established that other people's copyrighted material can be used as long as they are including commentary or criticism. Fair use has been around for a long time. According to the book Reclaiming Fair Use, it evolved from common law in years of precedent. The purpose of fair use doctrine comes from the courts wishing to seek out balance and protection for the public interest when it comes to the monopolistic rights of copyright owners. On that note, let's see how the copyright cops are doing. Okay, but what about the case Matthew Lombardo and Who's Holiday versus Dr. Seuss Enterprises? That was technically parody and satire, so that's fair use. <laughs> Um, what about LA News versus CBS? Well, that was for the purposes of news reporting, so, fair use. <sighs> okay, 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 hear me out, hear me out. What about the one with uh, Matt, uh, Matt Hol, no. Hoiz, 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 Yeah, Hossein Zada, yeah. Mm -hmm. Him versus Ethan Klein and Isla Klein. Uh, yeah, no, that was also fair use because it was making a commentary and a critique of a work, so. <sighs> what are we going to do? I think we just let her go. The world of copyright and fair use is a strange one to navigate through. It can be very confusing and a misunderstanding of the law could get you into some trouble with copyright infringement. So be sure to remember the four factors of fair use and ask yourself, is this copyright infringement or fair use? Okay, well, just, we'll let you off with a warning this time. Just don't do it again. Don't ever do it again. Even if it's my legal right? Ever!